In today's video, we're going to learn a solo low G ukulele arrangement of the Bach cello prelude. This arrangement was done by my dear friend, John Moen. And if you'd like to check out a video of him playing this, be sure to check out the video linked down below. If you'd like to download the tab that's shown on screen, be sure to check out my Patreon page where every month we do a vote for a different lesson. And this happened to be this month's winner. Let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to be working on the first 12 measures in this video. And to start here, we want to make sure we're getting comfortable with the technique that's used. So I like to use three finger picking for a majority of this. What that means is my thumb is going to be responsible for my C and G strings with my index finger on the E and middle finger here on the A. Now, if you'd like extra help with these techniques, check out the link down below where you can see an in-depth workshop working with this. But that's what I like to start with. Now, let's go and look at the first measure. It looks something like this. And this song is, well, a lot about shapes, especially in the first few bars here. This shape is taking your index finger and barring it across the second fret of the C, E, and A strings, and then taking your pinky finger and placing it on the fifth fret of the E string. And when you play it, it should sound and look something like this at a very slow speed. Now what's neat about this is you notice the left hand didn't move at all. This doesn't happen throughout the whole song, but throughout many of these passages, you just need to hold a pattern and get comfortable with finger picking the right order of strings. In this case, we're going to play the G string, then the C, then the A, E, A again, C, A, C, G, C, A, E, A, C, A, C again. So you see we're just holding this shape. Make sure you're getting right up next to those fret wires to make sure that you're getting a really good clean sound. As we go on to the second measure now, you'll notice it's another shape. It's just a little bit more complicated. What we're going to do is build this shape here. We're going to have four with our C string middle finger right here. We're gonna have pinky here at seven of the E string, and your index finger is going to go here on the third fret of the A string. So we have zero, four, seven, three. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to pluck essentially the same pattern. We're going to play our C string, or excuse me, our G string, followed by our C string, then our A, E, then our A, then our C, A, C, G, C, A, E, A, C, A, C. So you see it's the same type of pattern, just holding this shape. And at a really nice slow speed so that you can hear it sounds something like this. <laughs> I just made a little mistake. What did I do there? I plucked my A string twice. It's really easy to have those fingers accidentally strike the string, right? So when you're practicing this, keeping them really careful and controlled with the finger picking can help. Let me try that again. It should be something like this. Now, as we go to the third measure here, it's more of the same. In fact, this same shape is going to be used, just you're going to take the middle finger off and you're going to place the ring finger up here to the sixth fret of the C string. But you wanna make sure you're leaving your pinky here on seven of the E and your index finger here on three of the A. Otherwise, it's the exact same measure now, just with this six on the C being played. So it looks like this, G, C, A, E, A, C, A, C, G, C, A, E, A, C, A, C. And when I play it nice and slow, it should sound like this. Now, as we go on to the fourth measure here, we're going to go to a little bit different of a shape. What we wanna do is go back to what we were doing at the beginning of the song, using the bar across the second fret of the C, E, and A strings. And this time we're going to take our middle finger and place it here on the third fret of the E string. 
Now this is the first measure that holds a shape but changes the shape mid-measure. It's going to look something like this. We're going to play the open G, the 3 on the E, 2 on the A. So far so good part of the shape, but then we're going to play 5 on the E. Take your pinky finger, add it to the 5th fret there. Very important to not move any other parts of the shape though. We want to hold fast with that and add this finger here. Then we're going to play the A string again. Then we're going to play the E string, but this time on the third fret, so we take that pinky finger off. Then we play the two on the A again. Three on the E. The G string. E string. A string. And then we're going to add that pinky back on for five again. Then two on the A. Take that pinky back off for three on the E. Two on the A. And this is why we were borrowing from the get-go, is because the next note, the final note of, B, of measure four, is going to be two on the E. We take this middle finger off and pluck just that two on the E string. So this is the first measure that has some movement within it. And it looks something like this, nice and slow. Going now into the fifth measure, we're going to play another shape, but not really. We're going to leave this bar where it is, and we're going to take this ring finger and we're going to add it to the fourth fret of the C string. We're going to leave that bar. And we're going to pluck the G string, then the C string with that fourth fret, then two on the A, which is already there at the bar. Then we're going to take our pinky finger and place it on the fifth fret of the E string, making sure we leave that bar in play. Then we're going to play the 2 on the A, which is there with the bar. Then we're going to play this run of notes on the E string. We're going to start with 3 on the E. So we take this pinky off, add this middle finger here to 3 on the E. And then we're going to take that middle finger off for 2, which is part of the bar. And then we're going to place it back on the middle finger to the 3rd fret. Then we play 4 on the C, which is already there, been holding since the start. And then we're going to play 3 on the E, which is right there with the middle finger. 2 on the E, taking that middle finger off, and then we're going to place the 3rd fret back on with the middle finger. Now before we go to the last 4 notes here of the 4 on the G, the 2 on the C, the 1 on the C, and the 4 on the G, we actually want to just practice these first set of 12 notes because it changes a little bit. So the start of measure 5 should look something like this. Now the reason I'm saying it's changing is because what we do here is we go to the 4 with our ring finger to the G string, and then we're going to play the 2 on the C string with the index finger and slide it down to 1. And now our new sort of sense of home is going to be here at the 1st fret with the index finger. If you think about it, we were barred across the 2, we kind of had this as our little pocket that we were playing in. Now that pocket is going to move down one as we play that one on the C string, which means the four on the G for the very last note of this measure, we want to kick that pinky finger up to play. So just the last four notes of this measure look something like this. So you see the first time I play the four, I use the ring finger because of how I'm set up. But the second time I use the pinky and that's what makes this a really tricky passage, but really fun to play. So all of measure five is something like this, starting with that bar, ring finger on four of the C. Really important to kick those fingers over. Now, as we go on here, we go on to measure six. Measure six is actually pretty easy. We've got this index finger here on one of the C. We're gonna take the ring finger, add it on three of the E and we're going to open everything else up. And it's actually really quite simple to play. We're gonna play the C, E, A, E, A, E, A, E, C, E, A, E, A, E, A, E. So after all that movement that we had, we've got a nice little reprieve here, right? Now, as we go on to the next measure on measure seven, this is where we're going to start playing some runs, and there's a couple different ways to play it. So we're going to start by playing two on the E string, but as we do this, we're moving our finger position again. So right now we're kind of set at one. We're going to move our index finger to two on the E string. 
And we're going to play that. Then we're going to play open on the A. Then five on the A. Use your pinky finger. See how it's kind of one finger per fret here. Then four on the A with our ring finger, back up to five with the pinky. And now we need to play five on the E string, which is kind of awkward after playing the five on the A, right? So what John does in his performance is he goes like this. He kind of bars with the pinky so that he can then play the five on the E right away. I want to present you another option though. If you want, instead of playing the five on the E, you'll notice that the note that's written here is an A note and you could Anytime you see a five on the E, play open on the A instead. So is one better than another? It's up to you. So I would try playing it both ways. I kind of like the open A, but John's performance is so great. I really wanted to stay true to that. So you can try both ways. And so they each kind of look like this. Here's it the way it's written. Here's the way I'm saying using the open A instead. Whichever one you use, it doesn't matter. You're still sticking to the one finger per fret starting at two with the index. So when you move on from there and you play the three, it should be the middle finger on the E string. And then when you go back to the A note, you can play the five or the open on the A. Both work, right? And that's going to be two on the E. And then the A note again, you can do the five or the open A. <laughs> the three on the E. And then another A note again. Both ways work. Two on the C, that's going to be the index finger. What I like to do here is bar with the index so that I can play the two on the C, and then the two on the E, a four on the C, the ring finger here, and then the two on the C with that bar. So a doozy of a measure that has two main ways of playing it, and within those two main ways, there's a lot of other things that you can do. You can substitute some of the A notes, none of them. It's kind of cool. So here's what it looks like as written. And here it is using the open A string to substitute each time the five on the E string is played in this. So try both out and see what you like more as you're practicing. Moving right ahead here to measure eight. Measure eight's really going to use this low G string as is nine. We're now going to be moving our position. We just played that two, but we're going to slide up now and we're going to bar across the fourth fret with our index finger all the way across. For this measure, we're only playing the G and the C strings. So if your bar is kind of lax on the E and A, no big deal. We want to make sure that we're getting the four on the G and the C most. And we're going to play the C string, G string, then the C string seventh fret with the pinky finger, keeping to that one finger per fret, six on the C, seven on the C, G string fourth fret, and then we're going to play seven again, G, then four on the C, so we take that finger off, four on the G, seven on the C, six on the C, seven on the C, four on the G, seven on the C, four on the G. So it's this pattern that's essentially being played. Pretty straightforward overall. I'm just using my thumb to pluck all of these and it's just going between these few notes. As we go into measure nine now, we're going to play the four again on the C string, still keeping that bar. Then we're gonna play six on the G string, take your ring finger, place it on there. Seven with the pinky finger. Four on the C, which is already there. Seven on the G, which if you left your fingers in play, you can play. Six on the C, strip away the pinky, leave the ring. Four on the G, index. Now we're gonna move positions here. We're gonna slide that bar down to two and play two on the G string. Then we're going to play three on the E. Because our bar is now here across two, we're just gonna take that middle finger, place it on the third fret of the E string. Two on the E, just take off with the bar, leaving the bar, taking off that middle finger. Four on the C. Five on the A, just kick the pinky up. Four on the A, ring finger. Two on the A, index there. Five on the E, three on the E. So measure nine is actually one of my favorites because it has that movement. It looks something like this, right? Oops, 
Oops, I just made a mistake there, didn't I? I played the five, four, and then I skipped the next note. That's no good. Really easy to do, really easy. There's so many notes. A quick tip is there's always going to be the collection of the same number of notes in most of these measures. There's 16 notes, so there's 16 notes per measure. So if you ever get off count, it's okay to start back over and start again. Let's go ahead and try that again. So it's gonna be something like this, right? Now from here we go on to measure 10, and measure 10 is going to be more of these sort of runs. We're going to be living here on that second fret bar still. Play the second fret of the C or E string, excuse me. Fourth fret of the C string with the ring finger, two on the C with that bar, five on the A. Now when we do that five on the A, bar with that pinky. Get that five on the A or E string, excuse me, the A note, because what we want to make sure we do here is play that next. So it goes five on the A five on the E. And then we can play five on the A again. And then we can take that pinky off, play two on the E. Five on the E, put the pinky back on. Two on the C, four on the C, ring finger. Two on the E, five on the E. Three, two, four on the C, two on the C. So you see I'm just leaving that bar in play using one finger per fret to play whatever string needs to be played. The only thing that's tricky about that measure is when you play the five on the A for the fourth beat, you wanna make sure that you're adding that bar with the pinky so that you're ready to go for the five on the E. It's kinda of hard to jump there. So that sounds something like this. Pretty cool, right? So now we go on to measure 11 and we're going to change zones. Um, we're going to actually move our index finger now to the first fret and utilize some open strings, which is good because if your finger looks a bit like this when you're practicing it, you know you're doing it right. It's tough work, lots of bars, right? We're gonna play four on the E string. So we use our pinky finger, one finger per fret, two on the C with the middle, one on the E with the index, open on the E, one on the E, two on the C, four on the E, so see how we're fretting that one finger per fret. Then we're going to play two on the A to start the second half of this. Just move that middle finger down and then two back on the second fret of the C string. So you kind of have to jump there. So what I like to do to offset that jump is take that uh, middle finger there and bar. So it goes like this. Right? It's just that little trick of collapsing the bar and then taking it back off to play the one on the E and then the open E, one on the E. And it's more of the same. So that measure is a little tricky. But using that kind of flip to the bar can really help expedite it. And then from here, we go on to the last measure of this tutorial, which is measure 12. Now, this is not the last measure of the song, but it's the last measure we're going to be working on here in this video. And what's fun about measure 12 is it's really, really easy. We get to finish on such a nice note. We're going to play open. Open C, open E, open A. Two on the A using our index. We're going to be moving to that second fret again, right? Then when I say the second fret, what I mean is your index finger starting kind of at the second. So it's C, E, A, all open, two, three, index middle, open, open, two on the C, open on the C, open E, open A, two on the A, three on the A, open on the A, two on the E, and open on the E. So actually it's kind of the easiest measure of the whole song so far, and it looks and sounds something like this, right? And that concludes this first part of this beautiful piece of music that, again, John Moen did such an incredible job 
arranging. John's actually a former cellist, and I think that a lot of the inspiration when he was arranging this came from how he played it on the cello, which is a really unique, cool perspective for us ukulele players to draw from. A lot of those fingering choices he makes are very cello-esque, which is just the coolest. Now, if you'd like to see the rest of this tutorial video, be sure to check out my Patreon page where it's broken up into the different sections as you go through the 40, what is it, 42 measures, I think, something like that. 42 measures of music. Measure 42 goes like this. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> but it's a lot of music. If you're playing a high G ukulele and you feel a little bit left out, I got good news for you. Go check out John King Classical Ukulele. It's a book made by Jumpin' Jim, um, and it's done by, I think, the greatest classical ukulele player of all time, John King, um, and uh, he's just incredible. And that book is so good, teaches the Campanella technique and all this other stuff. So if you want some high G fun with this, check out that book. Otherwise, give this a go with the low G. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And to all my patrons, thank you so much for the support and helping make these videos possible. I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time for the next tutorial. Thanks so much.